Dear students, I will introduce you a new concept in this module. The peptide sequence tags. As you know, we have compared the molecular weights of the whole protein with the molecular weight of whole proteins from the database. We have also tried comparing the fra experimental fragments molecular weights with the molecular weights of the theoretical fragments. An important thing to learn here is that we can use this information to obtain the peptide sequence tags. Let's take a look at what peptide sequence tags actually mean. So if you have a protein, let's say of 10 amino acids in length, then you fragment it using different fragmentation techniques and you can arrive at the fragments. Now, just imagine that if you are able to fragment the backbone at consecutive sites. So this will give you an ability to actually have fragments that are differing from each other by just one amino acid. So this can be extremely useful if you can have multiple such fragments which are different from each other by just one amino acid then simply by subtracting the bigger fragment from the smaller fragment you can arrive at the molecular weight of one amino acid. Now if that amino acid's molecular weight can be compared with the molecular weight of 20 amino acids that we know then you can actually say which amino acid was there that was part of the sequence. So let's take a look at this example in order to better understand the peptide sequence tag concept. From MS1, you obtained the intact protein or peptides mass. In order to further analyze this fragment, you have to do a mass select, which actually means that you have to give a mass range from 375 Daltons to 377 Daltons for instance and any molecules in the mass spectrometer chamber within this range is selected for further analysis. Now further analysis actually means MS2 or MS3 and so on and so forth. So if the initial sequence of the protein was something like MQV and you manage to fragment it after MS1, that is in MS2, you can have fragments of the protein like this. Of course, these fragments can come if you cleave the protein here or if you fragment the protein like this. So here you have M like that or MQ here or QV here or even V. So if you fragment the protein at a specific site, then these possible fragments can be reported for this example. Let's assume that this is the spectrum that you obtain from the mass spectrometer. This is an MS2 spectrum and if you look at the different peaks, then this is the first peak with a mass of 149.05 and since you know the molecular weight of all the amino acids you can go back and compare 149.05 with the with all the amino acids and you will be happy to know that it is a methionine it's an m the amino acid next if you have another peak at 277 then you can say that it results from the sum of Q and M. So how do you know it was Q? The simple way is you subtract this and this is equal to the molecular weight of Q. So in this way you can subtract the previous peak from the next peak and if the difference between these two peaks is equal to that of some amino acid then you can confidently say that this is 
a specific amino acid. Next, there is this third peak. So now, up till now, you know that there was a methionine, there was a Q, and now you have another peak, which is at 376.14. So if you subtract 277.11, then you arrive at the molecular weight of valine or V. So you can then say that this is V. So using the same approach repeatedly, what you have done is you have subtracted this peak from this peak and arrived at V. You will be noticing that you are already forming the sequence of the protein. So given a bigger spectrum, given a lot of peaks, then you can repeatedly try to subtract the smaller peaks from the bigger peaks and annotate the amino acids that are there within those differences. So this is called the extraction of peptide sequence tags. Of course, there can be situations where there can be anomalous or there can be unwanted sequence tags that are formed just by chance. So in order to cater for that, there are other strategies such as scoring strategies that are going to filter these anomalous matches from your match list. So in conclusion, the fragments from MS2 can be measured for their molecular weights and that you can try to subtract the smaller peaks from the bigger peaks and you can arrive at the amino acids and if there are consecutive amino acids that are reported, then you can make a chain and you can call that as a peptide sequence tag. A very important take home lesson is that the fragmentation at consecutive sites leads to mass difference equal to that of a single amino acid. This is a very important point, so I have to put an emphasis on it and you also take care regarding that. So, of course, such consecutive peaks can reveal the sequence of the peptide for you.